Welcome back, budget nerds. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching this, then you know what the video's about. Roboman sent over their Roboman 380 vacuum for me to check out. This vacuum does have a few good redeeming qualities, but also quite a few flaws. Stay tuned while I tell it like it is. The Roboman 380, right now, comes in at $250, or as low as $130 if you use the Amazon coupon. Yes, you heard that right. You can drop the price by $120. Now, why would they do that? You're getting mopping, magnet strip borders, an alleged 2000 PA suction rating, Alexa and Google integration, etc, etc. So why the large drop in price? In the box you get a manual, which is decent, the mop container, the remote control, which is pretty basic, some extra brushes, four in total, the vacuum, which looks decent as well, you get the filter, a cleaning tool, and the dock with its power supply. It claims you can use magnetic strips to keep it out of certain places, but I didn't see any strips like that in the box. Taking a closer look at the vacuum, it feels and looks okay. The brushes went on without any issues. However, this sticker they used is just the worst. Fine, I'll just leave it. Taking a closer look at this thing, though, you can see that the finish and manufacturing just isn't quite as good as the others I've seen. Some of the surfaces aren't flush with each other, and some sections have gaps that are large enough to make you raise an eyebrow. Will it break or fall apart? Certainly not. But it just doesn't have the freshest coat of paint. The app to install for this vacuum is called Smart Life. I've used Smart Life before. I don't have any complaints about it. The vacuum goes around the house in a somewhat decent pattern, generally. And they claim it will map the house. But usually the map's not very close. It's not the loudest, nor the quietest I've tested. It was sort of in the middle. And I'd call it quiet enough. It will get to most areas in your house. Border mode worked pretty well, and the spot cleaning mode also worked fairly well. Once it finished with the spot mode, it played a very familiar tune. It did a pretty good job of mopping, but... There are some pretty large flaws with this vacuum. Let's talk about a few of them now. First, this vacuum really tends to go over the same spots twice, a lot. It tries to pick a pattern and stick to it. Sometimes it works, but it doesn't always. You're not getting the most out of this battery if it's not hitting the whole house all the time. Every time it went out, there was always some place it missed. Once done, if it manages to get line of sight on its dock, it will go back, but if your house's floor plan is a bit on the complicated side, it may struggle. In fact, most of the time in my house, it never found it. I had to put it in the same room for it to find it. It also never made it up my floor transition. It is large. Even if I helped it with the remote, it never made it, meaning I always had to intervene. Speaking of the remote... It works fairly well, but sometimes the vacuum won't get all the commands, so you're pressing the button a few times until it finally responds. Go vacuum! When you're moving it manually, it stops vacuuming, and won't start vacuuming again until after you've finished guiding it where you want. After it is at the mess you've guided it to, it will turn around and attempt to go back where it sort of was before. Manually moving it with the remote to actually guide it to messes was a frustrating task. It's sort of gentle at times, but other times it just bumps things. The sensors on the front seem to be okay, but far from perfect. When the vacuum was mopping, vents and uneven ground or running things over would actually rip out the mopping tray. I only had it mop my small kitchen once, and the water tray was ripped out twice. A pretty big flaw, if you ask me. I hadn't seen this on other vacuums I've tried out. Technology like this is supposed to simplify your life. This vacuum needs a lot of babysitting, and to me, that kind of defeats the purpose. It does do a few things well, but those flaws we covered kind of undoes all of it. At $250, 
I would say it's a hard pass for me. But right now, they're dropping the price by 120 which I think is smart. At $130, it's now in the perhaps it could be worth it category. So at $130, who would it work for? If you want a robot to set and forget, then it's still a pass. However, if you don't mind giving your vacuum a helping hand now and again, don't have a complex house, or no debilitating floor transitions, then it could work as a good vacuum supplement for you. Just don't expect this thing to solve all your vacuuming woes. I think for me, this robot would be perfect to keep in my garage to keep it clean. It would be perfect for that. Roboman, if you're listening, then keep it up. Address some of these issues in the next model, and I'd be happy to give that one a go. Thanks for watching.